In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your very own MCP agent, which is completely changing the game around how AI models interact with different applications. I'm going to show you from beginning all the way from setting up your own environment to host NA10 privately because we can't use it within NA10's own cloud environment at the moment all the way through to actually generating an agent that can produce the outputs that you're looking for. So let's jump into a quick demo and see how it's able to understand what it can do in a tool and go through and execute an action in that tool as well. Please tell me what tools you have available. We'll send that off. And then what it will do is it should come through to here. It should analyze what it's able to do in Brave. And then it will tell us exactly what it can do in this response here. And we will know how to go through and search for it dynamically. So now if I open this up on the left hand side, you can see we've got Brave Search, both local and web search. So that's great. That's exactly what we do have the ability to do. Now I can go, please tell me all of, of the news from the Australian Grand Prix 2025. We'll send that off. And if we come back into our AI agent, it looks like we've got all of the information on the left hand side here, which is absolutely great. Absolutely fantastic. And if you want to get access to any of the resources that we run through today, all you need to do is come into the community, which has the links below, come across the classroom, come into the AI agent. And as you can see here, we've got one which is called Master Guide to MP MCP with the AI agents. We've got the blueprint to the bottom, as well as all of the key links. And it'd be great to see you in there. We're building such a fantastic community. But let's jump straight into the video and see how it works. So the first thing we're going to do is come across to render. This is where you're going to be able to host your actual NA10 environment within a cloud. We're going to log into our service. We're then going to come across to where we've got deploy a web service. And what we want to do is come across to where we've got existing image. And we're going to need to input the Docker IO power part in here. So we want to come across to NA10. We're going to do GitHub. We're going to come down to the bottom here where we've got quick start. And then where we've got this docker.nan.io forward slash NA10 or that, we're going to copy all of that. We're going to paste into here. We're not going to include any credentials at this stage. We're going to do connect. We're going to call this NA10 MCP agent. We're going to call this, we're going to put it in the EU for this use case, just because that's where I want to host it. Now you can have different areas here. If you use free, you'll find that it tends to time out every now and again because of the actual capacity that we need to go through and use this. We'll actually find that you need some of the higher versions, like a, a standard version, just because we don't have enough bandwidth within the free version to go and do it. You can do it, but it will tend to time out and not be able to use it. In this use case, we're going to go through and use the starter version. Now we need to come through and add our environment variables. Now we need to come across to where we've got our nerding.io version. We're going to come a bit further down. We're going to keep coming down towards the bottom. And then what we'll see is it's got a command in here around being able to execute community packages. There we go. We'll do community packages equals usage. We'll copy this. We'll paste in here. And then what we can do is copy across where it's got true. Again, you can do this yourself or we can just type in their search. Depends on what you want. This is just a really quick demo of how to set it up. Again, there's better ways for doing the security and everything that goes around it. I'll include some links below around some of that. This is just a really quick demo to show you how to get it set up. So we'll just wait for this to deploy and it will turn on. So what we should get at the top here is our URL that we're going to be able to be using. We're going to wait for this to go through and start up. But as mentioned, there's two different ways of doing this. Currently, we can't use it in NA10 natively. We have to use it either locally on our computer or we use it in the cloud. Why we're using it in the cloud today is just because it's going to be able to run multiple times in the background. So again, if you've got some automations that you set up to run periodically, it will be able to do that versus running it locally. It only tends to work when you're actually using it. What we also tend to see by upgrading to that starter package is we won't lose any of our work because in the standard plan, after 50 seconds of you finishing the last bit of work you did, it will reset the entire environment. You will lose all of your work. Now we've upgraded to that starter account. It won't reset after you finish using it. It will keep it running in the background so we can leverage it in the future. If we come back into our agent, we'll see that it's going through. It started to add a few parts to it. And that ties nicely into just explaining a bit more about what MCP is and how it works. So MCP basically acts as a middleman between a lot of the applications that we're going to be using and the NA10 AI agent so that it understands what it can do with those applications but also can execute it in the best way possible. So imagine if you've got lots and lots of applications or you've never used an application before, this will help you go through and use it in the best way. So for example, within our list of tools functions, we can go, you know, what do I, what can I do in Brave? What's the output I can get? 
And then we'll be able to use the information because we know what the actions are, such as Brave Web Search. We can then go and execute a web search. As you can see here, this is actually one from Anthropic themselves and basically explains the same thing around how we've got our host. So in their case, it'd be Claude interacting with the MCP service and then going out to either the internet or other data sources to interact with them. And what's great about this is we can have it run 24 7 365. So if we come back into our environment, we'll see the services live. So now, if we copy our URL and then open it in a new browser, we will can just sign up. So we can do IX follow well, and then we can do next. This will bring us our, into our environment. We can just go through and update this quickly. There we go. We can just give it a few example answers in there. We can do get started. We can do send a license if you want to go through and use that as well. Now we're going to go through and start from scratch, but before we do that, we need to actually install the MCP protocol. So to do that, you want to come down to settings. You'll see that in here, we've got community nodes. You won't have that if you use NA10 at the moment. That's where we're going to come into here and we're going to go through and basically search for it. So you can do NA10 node MCP. What you'll find is one that comes up right at the top here. Again, this is one we're going to be using. All we can come in here and all we're going to type in is NA10 node dash MCP. We're going to say, yes, I understand the risks. And then we're going to do install. And we'll just wait for this to go through and install. And we'll know it's active because we'll have a little icon that appears and we'll be able to use that. Sometimes you just need to restart the environment after this is installed just to make sure that it's all activated. Again, just play around with it, see what works best for you. It may work straight away. So there we go. We're all installed. We've got version 1.12. We can come out of here. We can come start from scratch. And then what we'll just do is give this a quick test so we can do on chat message. So as we can see here, it's gone through and opened up straight away. Sometimes it doesn't connect this easily. You just need to restart the environment and you'll be able to do it. Now, the next part, we'll do MCP. So as you can see here, we've now got the ones that pop up, which is great. That's exactly what we want. So we can come through here. We can do list all available tools. So this is going to go through and find all the tools for us. Now to do the credentials, we need to come in here. We need to do MPX, but if you want to find the rest, you want to come into where we've got the nerd.io package. And if we scroll a bit further down, we'll find one example, for example, here around Brave. So this is MPC search. And what we need to do is copy this, paste it into our argument. We then want to come back across here. So we'll need our API key. We'll need to copy this and paste into the environments. We'll just change this to expression so you can see what I'm doing. We'll come into Brave Search. We'll copy our API key that we've got with them. We'll paste that in there. We'll keep it as fixed and then we'll do saved. And now what we should be able to do is if we do test is actually get some information that comes out the back of it. So we should just do test steps so we can do hello. This is just because it's, we've set it up with a chat trigger to start off with. But as we can see here, it's now executing. We'll just rename this to MCP Brave Search just because we're going to have lots of MCPs, as we mentioned a bit earlier on at the bottom here, just because we're going to make sure that we need to use the right one. So as we can see here, we've now got the ability to use web search. We've also got local search and we've got the responses that come back incredibly quickly. Now, the next stage we can do MCP. We can then come across to use execute tool. So we're going to do execute tool. The tool name, you can make this dynamic if you want to. I'm going to do static for now and we'll just paste in there for the web search. We'll come back into nerding.io and you'll see they've got an example here just around how you'll be able to send that response off. So we'll copy that. So we'll paste it in there. We'll do test step. And then what we should get on the right hand side is that response coming back around the latest AI news. Again, this can work incredibly quickly for us so that we're able to dynamically search the internet. Again, there's other versions like SERP API, which will enable you to do this. But this is what's great about the MCP because we can go through and use this dynamically. So as we can see here, it's now returned lots of information around the latest AI news. And what's great about this is that if we come into here, we've actually got lots and lots of applications. So these are just some examples that I plucked out that are very popular in the world of AI and automation. If I open this link up here, though, it will give you all of the ones that you've got access to. So we've got some of the reference servers here. So you've got an AI image generator, you've got some GitHub, you've got some Sentry, you've got Slack, you've got lots of ones there. There's also some official third party integrations in here. So Appify, we've got Cloudflare, we've got Firecall, lots and lots of different ones in here. And if we keep going, there's so many, there's even community ones in here as well, which are here. So again, think about the security and what you're comfortable using. But this is going to be such a core thing to NA10 and AI agents in the future, I think, because of the abilities that it provides. So for example, if we were to use Firecrawl, 
where we've got in our agent at the moment around this query. All we need to do is come back into where we've got fire crawl as a server, the abilities at the moment. And if we come a bit further down, you'll see that we need the different commands. So if we come down to here, this is how you'll be installing it. So as we mentioned a bit earlier on, but with Brave, if we come a bit further down, you'll see that we've got the scrape functions in here. So again, all you would need to do is copy this and then paste it into this tool query parameter and it'll be all up and running. Again, you can make it as static or dynamic as you want. So that's how we're going to be able to use it in just a basic automation way. What we'd also be able to do is utilize our AI model. So to do that, we'll just get rid of this so we can make it a bit bigger. We're going to come across and use open AI. Now to use the AI agent, we're going to need to go up to the standard account. So if we come across here, we've got the standard account here, the starter and this free version are too low. You will time out, you will lose all of your work. You're going to need to go up to that standard account. So we'll just do message and assistant and let, we'll go through and show you the actual AI agent a bit later on. So for example, here you need to connect your OP, open AI API key. So to do that, you need to come into playground of open AI. Well, what you want to do is come down here, come into your account. You want to do create new secret key. You'll be able to give it a name and give it a default project as well. If you want to, we already just generated one. So we've copied that across and pasted it in here. So now we've got access to OpenAI and all of the agents that they've got. So again, in here, if you wanted to do one that you've already developed, you'd be able to do that as well. We're not going to do that. We're going to, sorry, we're going to come back up to here. We're going to do text. We're going to do message and model, and we're going to do the mini from GPT-4. So we'll just load that in there. And now what we'll be able to do is please write an email newsletter for a community interested in the latest AI and automation news. Here are the latest news stories. Then we can change this to expression. We'll pop this out and we'll just pull this across quickly. And as you can see that one of the things I love about NA10 is it's going to go through and show us what the agent would see. Now, if we go through and do test step, it will be able to execute that for us. So we can call this newsletter AI. We'll just move this up whilst it's finishing executing. We'll just grab all of that and bring it back up into line. And as you can see here, we'll just wait for this to finish executing. Again, we're going to try and use our AI agent a bit later on. But as you can see here, we've now got an output that we'd be able to use. And it's able to do it nice and dynamic, exactly how we would want to be able to use it in the future as well. So. That's great for how we can use it as a base version. If we just wanted, for example, to be able to interact with search, do some manipulation, then send out more of an automation way. Now let's run through and show you how you can use it with an AI agent. So as mentioned, the first thing we're going to need to do is come back into our MCP agent. We're going to need to upgrade to at least the standard account because we need this CPU and ability to actually interact with it, or at least that's what I found in my testing so far. If you're running this locally or some of the other providers, make sure you test it out with them and see how it performs for you. So we'll load this up and what we'll do is we can see that we've now gone to standard. It's gonna restart our account for us. So we may do some of the work that we've just done. So what we'll do is we'll just come back in here and we'll copy this quickly. We'll wait for this to restart. So it looks like our server is now live. We open on a new tab. What we'll be able to do is log back in. And then we probably would have lost our information just because we've upgraded the account. So again, keep this in mind. It's a bit of a frustrating thing. I hope that NA10 really incorporate this into their own platform because then it will just solve all of these issues that we're having at the moment so we'll do start from scratch and we'll just paste in exactly what we had i'll just go in and load the mcp again quickly so that we can use that so there we go we're all authenticated again so what we'll be able to do as we can see here we'll need to add our credentials back in but let's go through and use an ai agent instead so we'll get rid of all of this. We'll do AI agent. We've got the chat node ready to go. We're going to do a chat model. So again, we'll use open router and we'll just come in here. We'll do create new credential. We'll add our API key in here. So we'll come across to open router. We'll copy this. We'll bring it back into our environment. We'll paste it in here. Again, I love open router. I really like using Claude for any of the copywriting. I found it sounds really human, but we also got some other great ones out there as well. So like O1 for the deep research from OpenAI or O3, I think we're on now. So it's going so quickly, I'm really impressed. We'll come across to memory, we'll do simple memory. This is gonna be five, so the last five chat histories, all of the last five messages, and we'll call it chat history, we'll pull that across. And now what we'll do is MCP, and then we'll connect our account back up. We're all good to go, we can list tools. So we'll just rename this to list tools. And then we can do the other one in here, which would just be MCP. And then we're gonna do execute tools. So set automatically, and then we're going to do execute tool. 
and then we'll come back into our nerding.io we'll copy this parameter query that we've got here come back into our account we'll paste that in there we're going to go and give it a change in a minute for the tool name we're going to use expression just to give it a quick test so we'll come into our uh, open it we'll come into our na10 documentation we'll copy this we'll paste it in here we'll pop it out and we'll go like this and then what this will enable us to do is dynamically interact with the tools that we've got available to us and execute them so in here we'll do tools and just say that in here we've got the most suitable tool for the agent to use to execute the desired response we'll say that it's going to be a string that we needed to use and then we'll get rid of that and now what we should be able to do is if we come through we'll give this a quick test so if we do save we'll rename this to execute tool and then we'll just rename this to our mcp agent we'll do save we'll make sure that we copy all of this just in case there's any issues but what we need to do first is come into our agent and then we need to give it a system prompt so we're going to do expression and then pop this out we're going to paste our response in here and basically what we've told it is that it's an mcp agent so it's got access to all of these different tools Again, if you're doing this, I'd recommend you put all of the tools in here so it understands what it's got access to at a high level, i.e. Airtable, Appify, stuff like that. What it will be able to do is then use that list tool function query to be able to go through and find out what you can do in those tools. And then we can go through and select the most appropriate tool as in the action, the execution. And then we'll be able to get the result that we're looking for. As we can see here, we're going to be passing across the command to the actual tool execution part. And then we've just given some examples here just for Brave so it knows how to use it just because this is a really quick demo that we're doing today. So now if I reactivate these, what we should be able to do is come through reactivate and we'll say, please tell me what tools you have available. We'll send that off. And then what it will do is it should come through to here. It should analyze what it's able to do in Brave. And then it will tell us exactly what it can do in this response here. And we will know how to go through and search for it dynamically. So now if I open this up on the left hand side, you can see we've got Brave Search, both local and web search. So that's great. That's exactly what we do have the ability to do. Now I can go, please tell me all of, of the news from the Australian Grand Prix 2025. We'll send that off because again, we've not specified the date time at the moment. It looks like it already knows to go and use the web search module because of how we specified the prompt in our AI agent. But if you made that a bit more dynamic, it would be able to go and do it automatically by listing the tools first and then going through and executing that tool and providing us the response back. Again, remember that if we were going to be using something like SERP API, we'd only be able to do 100 requests per month. This way, we've got, I think, if we come back across to our Brave account, we can do 2000 requests per month and one request per second. So again, really great option there and if we come back into our AI agent it looks like we've got all of the information on the left hand side here which is absolutely great absolutely fantastic so if we wanted to store this in Airtable or anything like that we would be able to get that response knowledge built up for this AI agent so it knows how to go and execute it in the future which I think will be really interesting I'm really keen to see where this space goes for the MCP I really hope NA10 make.com and other platforms integrate it into that core element because this is going to be so useful for interacting with all of the different tools like you can see here. I mean, scraping data, interacting with different systems, read, write, all of this stuff is going to be so useful in the future. I really hope that they progress with this incredibly quickly. This has been a really quick demo. Stay tuned for more around AI agents and have a great day.